Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the first Let's Play video from Unimatrix Gaming. Uh, today we're going to be starting a playthrough on Adeptus Mechanicus. Um, this was released in November 2018, um, so it's been out a couple of years now nearly, but it's still an absolutely wicked fun game to play. Uh, I'm going to be going through the Heretic DLC, which was released July of last year, so again, sort of been out a year, so it's not exactly fresh, brand new stuff here. But I'm going to be going through on hard. I've got about 100 hours or so of gameplay on this. So I've got a bit of an idea of what I'm doing. Um, so rather than this being a start from scratch tutorial how to play the game, it's more just going to be yeah me playing through it and, and sort of talking through the process sort of thing. Um, so let's, let's get on it. From the moment I understood the weakness of my flesh, it disgusted me. I craved the strength and certainty of steel. I aspired to the purity of the blessed machine. Your kind cling to your flesh, as if it will not decay and fail you. One day, the crude biomass that you call the temple will wither. And you will beg my kind to save you. But I am already saved. <laughs> For the machine is immortal. Even in death, I serve the Omnisire. Gonna get on hard. We're gonna skip the tutorial. I'm just gonna walk through the bits. Um, we've definitely got a heretic DLC on. Uh, I'm not a sadist, I don't normally go in for the Iron Man type stuff in these sort of games. I like to I like having a bit of challenge, but I also like enjoying myself and having fun. Um, so this is the, uh, the main screen aboard your Arc Mechanicus. You start off with just a couple of dudes here and a little servitor. So these are your tech priests. Um, throughout the game, you have a chance to fill up all these slots here with different units. Uh, these first six ones here will all be for tech priests, so you can possibly get up to six tech priests. But every playthrough is a little bit different. There's a little bit of RNG to what units you can get on what missions. Um, so if you look at dudes at the moment, they're absolutely naked. Got nothing but a servo skull. Um, so we've got to spend a little bit of money straight away to get some upgrades on the go. So we've got all these different trees that you can go down, all the different tech trees, and they're going to give you different sort of skills and stats for your, your priests. Um, they don't have to just stick to one either. You can do bits and bobs from all of them. So it's all about customizing your cohort to best work to your playstyle. Um, so you can only do them one at a time. Once you unlock one of the perks, you unlock a piece of armor, and then the next perk, and then a piece of armor, and it keeps on going through there. So let's go have a quick look here. So we've got atmospheric scan, revealing the enemy stats while in melee range. Server skull protocol. This gives your troops a buff. So your troops are these guys here that will be up here. Troops are going to count for anyone that isn't a tech priest, basically. So, then we've got this next one here. This is a really good one. Cognitive, cognition freedom. Um, you won't really understand CP points just yet until you sit, for that reduces the CP points on firing a range of gun. This is also a good one for early games, getting one CP point at the beginning of the turn. This is to cleanse negative status effects, so if one of your units has been poisoned with acid or something, that will be, um, it'll da deal damage over time, over turns, this can take that away. That is just pretty much what it says, it gives you more range for your ranged weapons, and this is the new tech tree that was brought in with the Heretic DLC, uh, storing one HP at the beginning of a turn. So, I think for this guy, what we're going to go with... Here we go. 
Minaris. So I spent some of my blackstone on that upgrade. And now I've got these two augment slots here. And that's when you can now start putting in um, your weapons. So you start with just the one axe and the two blasters here. So we've got phosphor blast pistol. It's quite a handy little thing because as you can see it doesn't just deal damage but it says it reveals target statistics and that's going to be really useful and you'll see why shortly. Um, this gun here is actually classed as a melee attack. Um, quite handy later on down the line. For now we're just going to stick this one here and give him his axe. Skip to the next guy. Still got 179 blackstone. Next upgrade is 121. So we're going to do this guy as well. Um, I think we're going to go that one for this dude. Just to mix it up a little bit. Same axe. Give him the same gun. So now we get back to our mission screen. These are all the different chaps that are going to be giving us missions along the way. At the moment we've only got from these two, but the other ones will give us missions once we've got into it a little bit. So, this mission says it's easy. These are the enemies that you like to encounter. Like Necron Warriors and Canoptic Scarabs. This little screen here is showing you what we can earn from doing the missions. We can unlock another axe, the Omniscian Axe, the Omnispex, and then some blackstone. And then there's another one here. So that's quite a handy little stabby thing. This will heal you. And that's some blackstone. This one says it just got Necron Warriors on. I think we're gonna go for this one, even though there's potentially more enemies, these scarabs were really easy to kill. So when you launch your mission. These are your available troops, and this will be the troops that you're deploying with. So, just like that, we've got two guys going in. Four guys going in, even. Um, just stick them all in. Because these guys aren't going to be very good offensively, but they're going to be really good cannon fodder. And then you've also got access to these canticles, which are unique to the Adeptus Mechanicus. Now, this game is based around the Admech, which is in the Warhammer 40,000 world and universe. Um, if you enjoy Warhammer, this is a great game to play. If you don't enjoy Warhammer, this is still a great game to play if you like your RTS and strategy games. Uh, the Warhammer spin on it just makes it a bit more appealing to certain people. Uh, and if you're in the Warhammer world, you'll know that the Admech have their own canticles. Um, we've only got one at the beginning store 5p on the active unit and that is going to be really helpful at the beginning because early missions are tricky so Faustinius has given us our little mission take a quiz to Scaviola I asked you on this mission because of your experience with surveying alien artifacts and organisms so the heretics of Stiggy's 8 can plunder this world for its secrets Assertion equals false. If objection slash concerns slash offense, go to different mission. Leave you free to do as you will. Dereliction of logic, Scaviola. Macarian 16.4. Watch your brother, for his sin of heresy is thy sin of tolerance. So all through this game, you're going to have this to and fro between Scaviola and Velex here. Both have very different... Um, ideas and values on how to move forward. As you can see, if you don't know, these guys are very mechanical, hence the name Adeptus Mechanicus. They believe that flesh is a weakness and there is strength to knowledge rather than the physical prowess. So as they get older, they seem to strip and shed more of their human fleshy traits and replace themselves with more bionic augments. To be honest, I just want to get into playing the game rather than reading all the blurb. 
I don't know how you guys feel about that. Let us know with some comments. But if we read all the blurb, it's going to take forever. Um, there are, however, some points where it's useful to read it. And I shall point that out to you. So, every mission is based around a tomb. Uh, the enemy we're fighting are the Necrons. The Necrons are a purely robotic race who have been entombed for over 60 million years, apparently. They've been just chilling out in their tombs, waiting for the world to rebuild itself after some massive cataclysmic war happens. Well, I guess over 60 million years ago. And now they are all awakened from their tombs to destroy and kill everyone, everything, pretty much. Um, so every map is actually a little tomb. And you've got all these different icons. So, the ones with the little blue exclamation marks when you go into these rooms, nothing will happen. It's just an empty room. The rooms with these little green icons, that shows that there's a glyph in that room. Uh, we'll show you that one in a second. And then we have these rooms here, with the sort of flashing diamond. These are your main objective rooms. This is where the enemy is, but you have to kill. Um, early days, there's only going to be one of these in each tomb. But as we get through the missions, there'll be two and up to three of them in each tomb. And it takes a lot longer to get through them. Um, you could zigzag all your way through to hit every single box. As you'll see shortly, every time you move forward into a room that you're not moved to before, you've got this little awaken level here and as you move forwards you'll get more and more uh, green bars fill up here and the numbers will go up as this all goes up it will mean that more enemies will be spawning uh, it's all stuff you will get to see rather shortly so we're going to go straight for this glyph room I'll show you a glyph so this panel controls a heavy door leading to a treasure room beyond which is filled with cognition. If we can work out the right commands, then we can reap the rewards within. Sometimes this gives you a little bit of a clue, but because you've got really nothing to go on but some pictures, it's just hit and miss. So that was a good one. We've got some black stone out of it. Brilliant. Uh, if you get one that's not good, it can take away CP. It can take away health from your units. Um, just like a good one can actually give you some CP or give you some health other than Blackstone. Once you've selected a, 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 a good one, a successful one a few times, it will show up as green the next time you sit. You will know it's a good one. Likewise, the bad ones will show up as red if you hit too many times. So here we go. Scavio's just got us a bit of info there. So the chamber ahead is lined with glowing green cylinders, each pulsing with power. The air is thick and greasy, and arcs of static electricity leap from the cohort's extremities as they approach. The chamber is almost certainly extremely dangerous, but it is the only way forward. So, we've got three options, and you need to carefully consider these options, because a lot of good or bad stuff could happen from them. So, we've got shut down, attempt to shut down the strange necron devices. We can try to study them, understand the purpose. Or we can go through very slow and steady. Extreme caution, carefully monitoring the energy levels. So, let's just have another quick look. Everything is... So, what we're going to do. So, if you try and shut down, we could be tampering with a booby trap. Going slow and steady might take too long. So, we're going to try and study them. So, here's where we've got our, our green bar. And this obviously wasn't a good decision. So we've just lost a bit of health. And the awakening has increased by two. So, got another one of these decisions to make on this one. Let's see if we can make a better one. Um, another note, Scaviada or Videx, they won't always pop up on one of these screens to give you a little hint. So, if they do pop up and read it, it gives you a little idea as to what they're after. So the fact that this guy's saying further study is yes, have some collected for me, Faustinius. Whatever our options are, one of them's probably going to be collect a sample. And more often than not, if you do what it's asking for you, you're going to be alright. So, chamber ahead has suffered damage from the shifting of the landscape above. Several dozen tiny beetle-shaped constructs are scurrying about industriously as they repair the damage. Um, so we do have a choir, but we've also got another one. So, 
collect a couple of scarabs for study. Ignore, because there's no time for such deviations from the mission. And acquire plus, which is attempt to collect several of them. It is in how they act as a group, the greatest insights will be found. So, we know that chap wants us to get some. Do we just get a couple for him? Or do we get a few? Because I think if you're going to get them, it's worthwhile getting them properly to do the job. Hey, and now he's popped back up. So he's happy. So we made the right choice there. So not only have we got some Blackstone, but we've got a couple of CP points, our cognition points. And we'll be needing as many cognition points for the battles as possible. Your CP points are showing up here in this bar. You start for just only being able to have four. But unlocks later on down the line will enable you to grow this bar to be eight, nine, ten CP wide. Yet again, RNG based, depending on what missions uh, you get off people. So, getting into our first little combat room. Our awakening's already on two here. Um, it won't even let us hover over as it's going in. But that basically means that more Necrons are going to be coming into combat now. Later on down the line, some of these missions, you have certain options where you can retract the awakening levels and give you an easier easier time. So, Necrons. Arrgh, Xenos form detected. Now tracking for synthetic forms. So this is the first time, basically, that we've made an encounter with these with this race. So our guys are basically trying to figure out what the score is here. The sinner have got these symbols on them. Captrix here, so do not underestimate. They've got Gauss weaponry. So, kill all enemies. So, it's a pretty small little level here. You can rotate, and you can zoom in, and you can zoom out. And you can also click on your guys and choose to deploy them somewhere else. So, if you want them a bit closer, you can do. So, I'm going to get a couple of these guys in there as well for the cannon fodder. Right, so we've got our two enemies to kill. We've also got this thing over here, which we should be able to scan. But you can only do the scanning with the uh, tech priests. You can't do the scanning with your servitor chaps. So I'm just going to get these servitors in. That's a bit of a, a block manoeuvre. Six and see, they're not going to last long. So now you can see that we've got a tech priest selected. We've got a scan thing over here. So this blue area, if you move anywhere within that blue area, that's one move. If you go into the orange area, you see it's got a minus one. That means it's going to take away one of your CP points if you make that move. If you do make that move, you're not then going to be able to use a weapon that has an orange bit next to it. So see this axe has a little orange bit, that means that to use that axe, we're gonna have to spend one CP point. Whereas a little shooty gun, a little phosphor blast pistol, is gonna be a freebie. So we're gonna push into that orange one, use the one CP point we've got, let's make the extra push, and we're gonna get some more blackstone. Blackstone is used for upgrading all your tech priests, and you want as much of it as you can possibly get. Now, once you've harvested the blackstone, you can blow up these um, terminals. Obviously, it's going to take a little bit more than that, but once you blow them up, that takes down your awakening level, and that can enable you either stay in the tomb for longer and get more blackstone, or it can just give you less enemies to kill and get you out quicker. So, we've also got a servo skull here. Now, servo skull can either be used to click on an enemy and it will reveal their stats or can use to get some cognition points so that's what we're going to try go on. there we go so you can only harvest one at a time yeah, again later on down the line you'll be able to get upgrades and you'll be able to harvest up to three i think cp points for some units 
So we could move him again. I think we are actually going to move him again a little bit, just within the blue, because that's not going to cost anything. We're going to leave him there. So, we've got our next guy here. So you can see we can't get close enough in for melee combat. So you've got to be within one tile for the melee combat. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to nip him behind this guy. Have another little shot at this thing. And I'm going to show you a stat reveal on the players. As you can see, we now know that this unit here has 8 health and no shielding whatsoever. It won't be long, we'll start encountering enemies that have shields. So we're going to push this guy right up. Maximum cannon fodder. Still not close enough to make melee combat. I'll get this guy up forward as well, just to try and be up in front. See, so the fact that these guys are getting shot and dying doesn't matter right now. Any units that die within the maps, they're not dead forever. They come back in the next go. Um, so I shouldn't have actually moved him away because I now want to try and. Oh crap, Max. There we go, that's blown up. Minus two to the awakening makes our bar go down a little bit. So we're going to keep him within the blue. So see how this gun is now glowing red. That means it's charged up with machine spirit. It means it's going to be a little bit more powerful. But they're all out of range. So I have to wait until next turn for that. So he's just taking another shot for our big guys here. Now we've got two points here. Now if you go into melee combat and you're locked into melee combat, you can't then fire your guns. So the trick here is stay within the blue. Get close. Give him a little zap with your gun. And we're going to get into melee range. We've got one CP point left. One CP to use our axe. Let's see if we can chop him. There you go. So he's dead, but not totally gone. See, so he's in this down state. Um, I can't remember right. I think it's three turns. It might be two turns. Two or three turns if you haven't completely blown him up. He'll reawaken. That's the joy of the Necrons for you. They have this reanimation protocol. So we've still got that movement allowed. So we're just going to rock right into him. Now, even though we can't do anything, this unit only has a gun on him, so we can't do melee combat. So if he wants to shoot us, he's going to have to move away from us. You can see there's opportunity. That basically means if he walks away from us, now that we're in melee range, we've got op opportunity for a counter-attack on him if he moves away from us. So it's a real good tactical move. Get you guys in close to him there, even if I haven't got any shots or actions left on him. Now, see these little scarab what's it's coming up here. Here we go, what are those? Opportunity equals knowledge, gather. So he wants us to, to gather some, even though you can't actually gather them, we're just gonna blow them up. They're basically yakking about wanting to study it. So, the screen here, we've got an opportunity to drop another servitor in for one CP point, but we don't want to spend our CP point. Not yet. So, if you have a servitor here, you can't make melee combat on that guy, so we're just going to get him in on this one. Bosh him off. We don't have to worry about him waking back up now. So, as you can see, when you get close to the units and the things you can shoot at, you get like a little icon come up to show that they're within shooting range or visibility. So, see here for example, I can see him. Get up here and I can see the scarabs as well. So we're just going to get a shot straight on in here. We've got a machine spirit to do a little bit more damage. And he's also revealed his stats. He's got 9 health. Now, what we can do here is 
we use our one point left, I'm getting near this block here. It's going to give us three CP points. Which means you can then spend the one to get close. And rather than using that one, I think I'm going to use my little cognition freedom here. I'm just going to make that free. As in, for free. So that doesn't cost me any CP points anyway, either. Let's use the servo scale just to bring their stats in. So these little scarabs here, they're going to try and get in and heal this, this warrior here. But you see, he tried to move away from us. That was his turn. He was going to move away. But because our unit was next to him, we got the opportunity attack. And it was enough to kill him. Oh, where did he come from? Interesting. See, again, that's an opportunity on him. Um, what should we do here? Right, so I'm not going to waste the shot or the melee attack on him. Let's get him a bit closer to this warrior here. We're going to leave him there, so he's in cover. But we'll use our servo skull. Aha, so this one, he's got some shielding. As you can see here, we've got two. And because it's orange, that means he's got physical shielding, which means that they will shield him better from physical attacks. So you've got physical attacks and energy attacks in the game. Gonna end his turn. Yeah, let's use one of his points. We're gonna bring in another servitor for cannon fodder. Because these guys can't move very far. Let's get him straight in there. Occupy this guy. Now, because he's got the physical shield, there we go. It's not really gonna do much to him. But. He's locked into combat now. He can't just sit there and shoot us. So, this guy here, we've got these scarab units right next to him. So likewise, if we try and move away from those scarabs, they'll have a chance at having another niblets with the opportunity. And see, because we're in melee, he's locked out our gun. So our only option is to give him a chop of our axe. Luckily, it's done the business. Now we can harvest some more CP points from there. Use our gun to blast him away so he doesn't reanimate. And let's try and get him close to the combat here. So, because we got stabbed by the little scarabs, they got the acid effect on us. So i got to hope to get this guy nobbled before the acid burns him down. Just going to collect a CP point along the way from that mast. Just get a shot in. So because this is an energy blaster, that's actually going to do damage to him. And then... What you'll see here is, so, because he's got two physical damage, he won't take any physical damage from a physical attack unless we're dealing more than two. So our axe here says it's going to do three to five. So it will do at least one damage to him if it hits on a three. And because the machine spirit is actually going to destroy one of his physical armors. So we should get some damage on him and knock his armor down to one. So as you can see, we did exactly that. We got him down to three. 3 HP and knocked his physical shield and down to 1. So that's going to make Mr. Hurt a bit easier with physical attacks. Not going to bring any more in, don't need it. Just move him for the sake of it. Okay, shield right in there. So he might do some damage now because he's only got the 1 shield in. There we go. Because there's no other units on the board the board in the tomb that's it no threat remaining jobs are good and all dead and then that's that tomb complete so he's a little bit miffed here as to where these guys teleport off to when when they die 
You know, their bodies aren't, aren't left behind. They're, they vanish somewhere. So, upon destruction, the Necron constructs vanish, leaving no samples to be collected. So, can I analyze, thoroughly search the chamber for any components that might have been missed by the teleportation effect? We've got abandon. Move on, hoping the next combat will yield usable samples. Or archive, take pictograms of damage from the Necron weapons. At least information may be of use. Well, abandon, we're not getting nothing out of that, so I don't like that. Analyze. See, if we were midway through a tomb, analyze option might be sketchy because it might take too much time and then you might get more awakening. But now we're at the end of the mission, analyze could be a really good one. Archives looks like it's a bit of a cop out. At least this information be of use. We're going to go for analyze. Well, not too good on that one. The awakening's increased, but it doesn't matter because we're getting out of this tomb. But we have got a new weapon unlocked already. It's pretty cool. So, because that was the only orange diamond combat mission in the tomb, mission's complete. Scaviola's happy. Faustinius is happy. We're going to go back to the ship. This is your, your post mission debris screen. So these are your tech priests, these are your troops, these are your enemies you killed. Got success. They have the unlocks that we saw before we did the mission. And then you see this bar here. So this is the total awakening bar. So as you progress through the game, every tomb you complete, whatever number you have on here, I'll go into there. So because we ended on a two, I stuck a two into this bar here, and it says we're two percent. When this bar gets to the end, if you've not already encountered the final boss, I'm pretty sure it will force you into the final boss encounter. Now, on the playthroughs I've done, I've managed to get to the, the final boss encounter, I don't know, 70 80% of the way through. So I've not got all the way to the end, but I'm pretty sure if you do get all the way to the end, uh, then it will just force you into it. But I've managed to get there early, uh, and I've managed to do that by reducing the amount of awakening time I have and I'll explain how we do that in other missions because you can't actually do it yet it's much easier to see it if your tech priests are injured at the end of the battle you lose a bit of blackstone really really hard to not take any damage in these early missions because not only do you not have much health you don't have any shielding and you've got no way of healing yourself um, very shortly we'll start unlocking the ability to give our units some healing powers so we're just going to close that we've unlocked a new canticle next physical attack will deal three extra physical damage um, so we've got more blackstone here we can use that to upgrade the rest of our guys but i think we will do that on the next episode because um, this one's already i don't know half hour or so long i think and i've been wrapped in on like a madman so uh thanks for watching the first video everyone um all comments, criticisms, muchly appreciated right now. We are so new to this. We are really finding our feet. Uh, there's four of us in our Unimatrix gaming crew at the moment. Uh, we're all good buddies that just play games. So we decided, why don't we try and document it a bit and try and see if we can get some other people enjoying our gameplay and maybe help some people out, make some kind of community, you know, all the good stuff. Um, so once again, thanks for watching. Leave some comments if you could. Follow, like, subscribe, all that usual jazz. And yeah, I hope you watch the next videos. Thank you very much. Take care.